well, this afternoon you'd have to brace up for more. That's the warning from the Institute for Energy Security, IES, which is projecting a grim outlook for Ghana's petroleum sector. The Institute says for the rest of February 2022, there could be another jump in prices of petroleum products which will bite consumers further. IES explains that the depreciation of the Ghanaian city against the US dollar adds on top of the factors expected to push the prices of liquid and gaseous fuels uh, in the country. Uh, meanwhile, pressure is mounting on government to cushion consumers with the windfall generated from the sale of crude in the international market. The 2022 budget pegged a barrel of crude oil at $62.5, but the commodity is currently trading at $95. Uh, dollars uh, a barrel. Uh, well, we need to obviously try as much as possible to break down uh, the figures for you. My uh, colleague uh, Isaac Kofi Ajay will be joining us uh, to break down all of it and what it means uh, for you as a consumer as well. You need to know uh, obviously what you would be paying, what the trend has been and what this means for the Ghanaian economy. Uh, fortunately, Isaac is here. So Isaac, let's start off uh, and let's talk about what's uh, currently the situation at the pumps, because that's where consumers get to feel the pinch of the increment in the fuel prices at the international level. So uh, what are some of the trading points at the pumps? Just give us a, a breakdown on that. All right, so Blazer, let's start with um, some selected OMC, so Total, Shell, Goyle, Allied and Zen, and how much they are charging. That's the export price you know, for, uh, for petrol and diesel. So for total, it is selling pet petrol currently um, as of um, 4th February at 7 cities, 45 pesos, and diesel at 7 cities, you know, 50 pesos. Now, Shell is selling petrol at 7 cities, 48 pesos, and diesel at 7 cities, 45 pesos. Now, you could see the same for, you know, Allied and then Zen. But if you watch, you could realize that all these prices are beyond you know, the seven CD mark. So all the prices for both petrol and fuel um, diesel are above the seven CD mark. So here we look at the trend from 2015 to 2022. Mm. What has the price of fuel been for both um, diesel and petrol? So in 2015, you know, diesel was selling at two CD 77 pesos. Petrol was selling at two CD 60, uh, 64 pesos. Now, fast forward to 2020, where COVID struck, we had, you know, diesel selling at 4 CD 74 pesos and petrol. The same and, that, and that CD was due to the, the decrease in, in consumption, right? Exactly, exactly. So in 2021, uh, you know, as of December 2021, the average fuel price um, for both petrol and diesel was around 6 CD 80 pesos. Now, in 2022, this year, as of February 4th, you know, petrol is selling at 7 CD 20, um, 26 pesos on the average, and the same for, for diesel. So if you calculate the percentage change from 2015 to 2022, February, it means that price of fuel has gone up by more than 160% within this period under review. And from 2019 to, you know, um, 2020, it has gone up also more than 30% within the period and that so, so it appears that systematically there seems to be some some rise in, exactly. in, in in how much we're getting to pay uh, for fuel prices but i'm sure that there are a number of components that are contributing to what it is that we're experiencing now absolutely let's look at the components so um we we'll start with the tax and margin component on the the price of um how do you call it the the liter you pay you know co um, components of taxes and then margins on per liter of fuel at the pump so we have energy, you know, debt recovery levy, road fund levy, all amounting to two CD 65 pesos. So every liter of petrol or diesel you buy, you know, we, there's been a slap of two, two CD 65 pesos of levy, uh, levies and what uh, margins as, uh, uh, on it. So there are, there are as many as 13 components. Yeah, 12 in, in components. Terms of 12 yeah. components yeah. in terms of the uh, tax that is being imposed Absolutely. by government. Absolutely. So from taxes, and then this comprises of taxes and then margins. Taxes comprise of about you know tw um, six, and then we have the margins as well, all amounting to two cities, sixty-five uh, you know pesos per liter. Now here we look at how much you pay as taxes or margins per liter of fuel from 2018 to 2022. Now in 2018 you were you were paying as um, you were paying one cities ninety-seven pesos you know per liter of petrol or, or fuel. 
2019, it rose to two CDs, 30, 39%. That's, this is taxes and margins. Mm. And then in 2020, two CDs, uh, 40%. And in 2020, this year, you're paying as high as two CDs, 65%, you know, per liter of, you know, fuel. Um, fuel. Now, here, you remember that there were um, 16 driver unions calling for government to scrap you know, five levies and cha uh, charges per liter of fuel. So we had the energy sector levy of um, 20 pesos per, per liter, sanitation and pollution levy, energy debt recovery levy, you know, road fund levy, and special, uh, you know, petroleum levy. Um, the 16 driver unions were saying, scrap all these taxes so that you can have some relief on the, the, the price build-up. Now, if we do the math, you know, if you add all the, the um, how do you call it, the taxes that the 16 driver unions are calling government to scrap them, that will amount to one CD 73 pesos. Now, if you subtract that from the current, you know, average price of fuel, which is 7 CD 26 pesos, mm. that will mean that we will be having an export price of 5 CDs 53 pesos, which is way below the 7 CDs, you know, 20 uh, 26 pesos that we have currently blessed. So what, what you mean to say is that if, if we uh, rework the figures uh, and, and take off the tax components, the, the 12, a total of 12 tax components, we are likely to have a significant decrease in the, in, the, in the five prices. The five identified components that the, the 16 driver unions, you know, were talking about. If you take that away, you know, that will be reducing the price of fuel from seven cities, 26 pesos to five CDs, 53 pesos, and that could be a big re relief for the ordinary Ghanaian and motorists. Isaac Kofi is uh, with the Joy News Research Desk. Uh, let's have a conversation on this. The IES is already projecting that we need to raise up for more. Uh, joining us now is uh, Fritz Moses. He's an analyst with the Institute for uh, Energy Security. Uh, and uh, also Duncan Amwa is uh, with the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers. He's the Executive Secretary. He's joining us via phone. Uh, let me start off with you, Fritz Moses. So you have done a cursory analysis of all that's happening now. W how much more are we to brace up for? I guess that's the concern of the average consumer out there. She will rely on the, on the OMCs because this is not um, a general addition or um, more like what the tax components that was introduced or reintroduced, like the PSRL, where 15 pesos or 16 pesos was introduced across the board. This will come in the form of their margins. And so they will have to decide on what the, um, the, the, the exact uh, figures would be. But we look at a, um, an increment between 15 to 30 pesos per liter. Um, what, what are the factors from your end accounting for this uh, sharp rise in the, in the fuel? Uh, prices uh, already domestically we've done that analysis here uh, talking about the for instance the tax component uh, being attributed to this significant hike in the fuel prices what more do we know about the factors that could be uh, adding on to to this pressure that's already in the system well um largely what we are seeing is the international market forces and so the fact is we produce or we, we purchase most of our, um, our products from the international market, the European region. And so whatever actions or whatever things that are happening there will force the local markets to also experience it. And we'll be seeing a considerable rise in prices on the international market. And that's also negatively affecting us here, where we are seeing prices rise at the pump. Rise at the pump. Now, in just the, um, in the just ended price, you know, that's the first price we know of February. We saw for the international benchmark Brent crude price increase by some 4.47%. That was from around $87.16 on average terms in the previous window to around $91 per barrel um, on average terms also in the just and daily window. We, look, we also look at the finished products, um, petrol and diesel, that's gasoline and gas oil, and we see prices also increase. For well, gasoline, price, prices increased by some 7.17%. Um, 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 Percent from around eight to three point two five dollars per metric ton in the previous window to around eight eight to two point two seven dollars per metric ton for diesel or gas oil, right? Also increased by around seven point four percent, rising to about eight to one point four six dollars per metric ton from seven six four point one one dollars per metric ton. And these increments, of course, have largely been influenced by international market factors and traders' sentiments. Uh, in relation to the issues or the surrounding uh, tensions between the Russia-Ukraine um, invasion 
and also of course the um, the supply glut that had been experienced in 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 in, in um, uh, I mean of course the lowering of um, of of storage uh, stock stockpiles in some countries like uh, um, like Singapore and and others and of course also the the, the change in the delivery and leadership to um, put the market off a bit traders off a bit and so these are the things that are causing the markets uh, the prices rise on the national markets and of course also um, trickling down to our local markets too. Duncan Amwa, shortly, but from your analysis, you're painting the picture and, and it looks as though government is almost helpless in this situation. To a very large extent, that, that's, that's how we see it, because uh, the factors, cause, like we've been saying all along, I mean, from somewhere two years ago, that the factors causing the increment are things that government cannot um, immediately control. But then again, uh, there were measures, the stop gap measures that we were expecting government to put in place and not further um, add on to the cost that the consumer was being, uh, was going to bear. That was the point in time when the new taxes were introduced, the energy sector, um, the uh, pollution and sanitation levy, um, the debt recovery levy, energy debt recovery levy, some other margins too were increased. We were the opinion that they were insensitive and that they were not going to help the consumer because in hindsight, we were seeing prices I mean, doubling at a point in time. I mean, when we are trading now, it's five fifty four dollars per barrel in the international market. We are seeing prices doubling and we reaching um, hundred dollars per barrel. Now, some international analysts are saying prices might reach uh, one twenty dollars per barrel, and this will definitely affect the consumers. And so, when governments are also reintroducing these um, new taxes and price um, increasing some uh, levies on margins on the price, would have been so they were, they were, they, they should have been. Um, I mean, some way thinking around those areas. But going forward, uh, it's 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 quite difficult for government to actually come out with any um, um, feasible proposal that will um, stabilize prices uh, temporarily. And of course, not to forget, we also see the influence of the city, the constant city depreciation on the price border, where from somewhere last um, year in July, August, um, up to the end of the second pricing window of um, of January. We have seen a uh, depreciation of the city by almost 27 percent, and that's huge. And that's of course um, affecting the prices of, of of goods and services, and largely also petroleum uh, products that we are importing into the country. And these are some of the things that we think um, um, governments seem to have lost control over. Because at the end of the day, especially for within the last rising we saw a depreciation of about 1.26 percent, and that's huge. That's just over two weeks. If over two weeks we are the city is depreciating by um, that percentage and prices are already increasing on the international market. The two factors will come together to push prices up at local points. Perhaps you will, you will not even be seeing a 15 pesos addition because of the depreciation we see, but even more, um, it may even double, it may even reach 40 pesos for some OMCs. It all depends on them. I mean, they're in okay. the European market. Um, so they may uh, want to take off some of them. Fritz, th there's one more issue I'll take you on, but first let me hear from Duncan Amwa. You are concerned at this point that government would have to come through uh, and cushion consumers. Obviously, there's a trickle-down effect, particularly in the transport sector. Uh, what's the proposal from the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers in, in terms of dealing with this imminent crisis? Good afternoon to you and to your viewers. Uh, the truth of the matter is <laughs> government is unlikely uh, to suspend any of the taxes on the price builders. As we have had this discussion uh, over a year uh, to date, uh, we've on different occasions sent memos, uh, sent even mathematical computation. Uh, to explain what removing some of the taxes would have meant. Uh, we don't think that government, from what we see, what we know, uh, will be in a position to reduce the taxes. Uh, however, there's another way out. Government would not need to review or reduce taxes. Would only need to manage fuel prices at this point for Ghanaians. And managing fuel prices for Ghanaians at this point uh, would mean that government should not go to sleep. And 
expect that the windfall that they are getting as a result of international market price increases uh, should be money that the government itself uh, should keep. Uh, we say this on the back of the fact that just a year ago, in 2021, uh, per our computation, government uh, would have made at least 2.5 billion Ghana cities uh, in windfall income uh, revenues uh, as a result of what the budget, uh, I mean, expected and what the reality on the international market eventually was. Uh, government did uh, gain additional windfall revenues of 2.5 billion. Uh, what was the cost, however, to government for fuel prices going up? Uh, we are getting something in the region of 30 billion to government alone uh, due to increases uh, in cost of government contracts, cost of running the Office of Government machinery, uh, whose budget has had to increase simply because, uh, not because they've increased salaries for the operators, but the cost of running around generally has become unbearable. And so we have proposed and are still suggesting to the finance ministry to make a conscious effort at using the windfall income. If you did budget for $62.5 uh, in the 2022 budget, it means that per our projection, uh, if we get crude at $62.5, uh, we to finance our budget. Any extra is a windfall money that would need to be managed outside the budgetary allocation. And so we say, apply part of the almost $30 now uh, per barrel windfall to the BDCs who import the product. Most of these increases we are seeing currently is because world market prices have gone up, and that means BDC pricing uh, would also go up. If government sat with the BDCs and agreed that, look, per this window, how much is the variance between what we're paying the last uh, window and what uh, you are going to sell your products for now, you would probably realize, okay, $8 million or $10 million would suffice. If government could fall within the windfall revenues that we are generating due to high uh, incidence of crude prices on the international market, we would be able to offset this increase that the BDCs would have passed on to the OMCs to pass on uh, eventually at the pumps to consumers. But sadly, nothing is being done. And so you saw an increment uh, not long ago when fuel uh, at the pumps was largely trading uh, below 7 cities. Okay. Uh, I, I, I see. Increment now hitting almost 7 cities, 45, 7 cities, 50 per square. And the increase is incremental. What is this today? If there are any variations in price tomorrow, right. you will add on to it. But I, I, if what is this today was one city and you need to add 20 per square tomorrow, it will simply be one city, 20 per square. It cannot be one city, uh, it cannot be six city, seven city, eight city. So we are saying there needs to be some fund management of this petroleum uh, downstream pricing. Otherwise, the entire economy would lose every gain that we have made. Okay, but you, 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 you are supposed to talk about cost but, of goods and services going up. Importers are already threatening to increase everything. Right, Duncan Amar, you, you're stop. subscribing, basically you are subscribing to subsidies. Government is in a tight fiscal corner. How do we reconcile this? The argument is allow the market to flow so the consumers can pay the actual price. How about that? Well, you see, the subsidy thing might not even be subsidy altogether. Uh, I did mention earlier that the biggest consumer, in fact, our biggest client at COPEC, is government itself. The Office of Government Machinery Ministries, departments, agencies across the country, uh, the country, uh, state-owned enterprises, uh, directors that we need to fuel to be able to do their job. If you put that expenditure together, any time fuel prices go up by one Ghana city, the government itself is overburdened with extra expenditure.
expenditure or additional expenditure. And so, look at the budget we have for 2021. The total was about 100 billion. The 2022 budget, you have to move to 137, 140 billion. The cost of fuel plays a major factor in even the cost of contract. How much are the road contractors willing to construct your roads for? How much are the other government contractors? Those building the, the, the 111 hospitals, right? Would they be able to still perform with the same values that they would have performed last year? Okay. Knowing very well fuel has moved from the 5 city per liter region and is approaching 8 city per liter. So government itself is going to spend or pay hugely for these increases. Okay. And that is why we think government should apply the windfall revenue that we are generating because as an oil producing country, Anytime prices go up on the international market, right. it puts some, some profits okay. to the country or the economy. Mm. Apply part of that to cushion your local prices because it is going to cost all of that eventually right. something that we may not be ready to pay for. Okay then, Duncan Amor is the Executive Secretary for COPEC. Earlier you had Fritz Moses with the Institute of Energy Security. Uh, there's definitely an implication for uh, the Ghanaian economy because as the city struggles to firmly stabilize against the US dollar, local importers are already hinting of increasing the prices of general goods to help them stay in business. Uh, fortunately, I've been joined by Professor John Gachi, economist with the University of Cape Coast Business School, also the Executive Secretary of the Importers and Exporters Association uh, of Ghana, Samson Asakia Wingobit is joining us. Uh, let me start off with you, uh, Prof. Uh, so here we are today. Uh, the exchange rate is also of concern. In fact, IES is pointing that out that clearly the uh, Forex is part of the reasons why we are experiencing such a sharp rise in fuel prices. What's the implication for the Ghanaian economy, really? Well, I think the implication is what we are seeing. Uh, since we are using a particular formula and uh, depreciation is a major element of that formula, uh, we have seen that because of depreciation, uh, prices will have to go up uh, at the pump. And that's what we are seeing. And prices of uh, sensitive products like petroleum products uh, are also reflective on prices of other items, uh, goods and services. Uh, so you, we have started hearing transport owners uh indicating that they are likely going to increase transport fares and that will also affect food prices and then uh, as we go along we'll continue to see upward trend of uh, inflation we have moved sharply from around single digit of inflation within a short period of time to around 13.9 percent the pass-through effect of fuel price increase uh continuously is still within the economy and other prices are going to increase and the pass-through effect will also have upward direction in terms of inflation. And uh, all those will have implication for uh, monetary policy stand. Uh, we believe that with this environment, monetary policy uh, rate will have to go up and that will also have some implication for interest rate or lending rate in the country. And so the cycle will continue and that if we are not careful, we will come to uh, a halt. So I believe these are some of the few implications. Uh, and also, it will also have effect on the efficiency of government delivery. Uh, what it means now is that the cost of goods and services will go beyond what have been budgeted for. So uh, if ministries, department wants to buy let's say vehicle for uh, their operation, uh, the full cost that we have to uh, uh, budget it for, uh, you will see that we are going beyond that. And that uh, will bring about some inefficiency in managing or executing the budget. Somebody indicated earlier on the cost of contract will be escalated as a result of the impact of this development within the economy. So that cycle uh, will continue and I believe that will strengthen the call by labor unions and workers in general for extra to, 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 to live within the level of price increases within the country. And that will strengthen labor agitation uh, in the country if the trend continues. 
Uh, we'll hear from Samson Asakia Wingobit shortly, but Prof, just a little clarity on this. Spend a minute uh, explaining this to us. Government says, or has given assurances that they are on top of the uh, job in terms of containing the failure of the CD uh, on, on the international market. Why is that not working out, really? I think because there are complex factors that determine the performance of a currency. Uh, it depends on our level of productivity and use of what we produce. It depends on the level of import and other payment outside the country, including payment for interest on loans and amortization that are de uh, denominated in foreign currency. Uh, so uh, there are complex factors. And until we put all these things in place, I will continue to go through some of these uh, difficulties. And I must also indicate that some of the factors are outside the control of the government. So when it comes to depreciation or the exchange risk uh, 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 instability, uh, we don't have all the components in the hands of government. We have all in part. For example, if you realize that you spend a lot of foreign currency to import food items into the country, and you know that you have the ability to produce those items, then your agricultural policy should be able to address that one. So that the strength of depreciation on the account of the, those things that we can do for ourselves will be limited. So that we are left with um, the component of depreciation coming from external factors that we don't have control over. If there are instability in Ukraine, uh, if there is a possibility of the U.S. raising its federal rate, those things are not under our control, and they will have impact on, uh, on, uh, on the currency as we go along. But we need to work assiduously to ensure that the aspect of exchange rate management that we have control over, we are able to do that. But unfortunately, we have very weak policy response to some of these things. Uh, I'm grateful, Prof, for your time. Uh, let's uh, hear from Samson Asakia Wingovit. Uh, they are indicating that prices may go up in terms of uh, some goods that they import. Uh, Samson, first of all, explain to us why uh, you're deciding to take this approach. Um, I hope my, my line is clear and you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Good, good. So taking that from where Professor John Gattis left, um, Quite clearly, it made you to understand that uh, so far as the city continues to depreciate, uh, it is not only the importers who are going in for the city, I mean for the dollar. Uh, we, we must set this, this record straightforward. Um, we have commercial banks that are not owned by Ghanaians, that are owned by foreign companies, and per our GIPC law, um, they, are prefer, they, are, they, are, they have the, the, the absolute right to repatriate the profit that they have made, declared after, after tax. To their, to their shareholders. We have telecommunication companies, giant telecommunication companies that are even not yet providing all the telecommunication, but as well as mobile money and staff who are also declaring profit. After profit, they have their shareholders they have, that they have to go and convert it into dollars and then repatriate them. Then you look, you have the uh, mining company, you have the prison companies. So it is not only, it doesn't look like only the, it's the importers who are always going in for the dollar, but all these areas, all these a uh, group that I've made mention are also having a direct impact in the depreciation of our city. Now, as we speak now, if an importer begin the year with, let's say, he peg his price in between around, uh, say, let's say 6.2, and he's selling his, his product at the market at around 6.2, or thinking that by the time he will finish selling the product, he will be able to go and change the dollar or get a dollar from the bank at 6.2 or 6.3. Then, lo and behold, the dollar has risen to like one dollar is now for about, let's say, 6.7. Because you go to the interbank ratio, it is stated there clearly on their notice board, but they don't have it. But if you go to Alaji, Alaji sends you at 6.7. And so these are the challenge that we are talking about. So as soon as the person gets the CD now, I mean the dollar to the CD and the CD to the dollar now, and move out to buy cargo. By the time the, the goods arrive in Ghana, customs are using dollarization rate in calculating the duty. He comes to the market. He also also know the, the last time I bought the goods, I bought the dollar at one dollar cost me six point seven. So for me to be able to be on in businesses, he has to make sure he pricing the goods. Strategically said that at least it will be a little above the six point seven because. We don't know the future. As I said, that 
certain factors we can control, certain the external factors we cannot. The external factors are that by the time the importer finish selling at maybe 6.7, perhaps the CD and the dollar rate might have moved like okay. six CDs, 80 pesos. Give so us a so clear picture on this. Uh, what's the timeline looking at? When exactly should we expect that increment? When well, exactly? so, so far as we have the CD and the dollar ratio and importers will put their money in their commercial banks, looking at the, the dollar sign in the commercial banks, which is pointing at six cities, 20 pesos or 60 to 30 pesos, but you cannot have it, but you, are end, going, you end up going to the black market before you can get it. It tells you that right now, goods and prices will definitely go higher. Okay. Now, coupled with this current petroleum product that transporters are... Uh, are announcing to increase or to maintain 30% petroleum increment coupled with the 30 pesos that we are getting the increment. It tells you that if one clear cargo from the port today and transporting this same cargo to Asante region to any, of, any part of this country, transportation will have gone up. And if transport fares goes up, then automatically our goods and price mm. too will definitely go up because right. you are transporting them and you are paying a higher transportation. For that matter, you have to pass it on to the final consumer. So for us, if you ask me, we will only appeal to government that government should be able to come out now and tell us where the dollar rate is. If you are going to trade 60 to 20 percent, there should be 60 to 20 percent for the next three All months. Right. Then okay. importer can be able to project, make projections. Then we should also make sure that the dollar is available with All the right. commercial banks and not the foreign, the foreign, the, the black market rather. Okay. This we can plan better and can give the prices can come down. I'm grateful. That's the executive director, uh, secretary for the Importers and Exporters Association, Samson Asakia. We'll go a bit. Okay.